Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. I'm sitting here with the rather wonderful Mr. Reed Shippen. How are you? Greetings. What's going on, Warren? Having a great time. What we've got here is Reed has kindly given us access to his incredible collection of drum samples that he uses. We're going to listen to each one, and he's going to describe how he uses them and, to the best of his recollection, how he recorded them. Reed Shippen, are you good? Are you happy? Are you healthy? Are you safe? Everyone's cool. I'm doing great. Just sitting in the studio, mixing some tunes. How are you? I'm good. Are you allowed to tell us who you're mixing? It's a super cool artist named Lydia Luce, L-U-C-E. It's super cool music produced by Jordan Lenning, recorded by Jason Lenning, Badass Brothers. Um, great. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I got yeah. to I got to hang out with Jason four years ago. It was one of our first videos we ever did in Nashville, about four years. And of course, his dad is incredibly talented and incredibly famous as well. well oh man, his dad's the bomb. Got to interview and talk to him as well. That was pretty awesome. Talking about like uh, That's fantastic. George Jones and Dolly Parton and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Oh man, he's worked with so many people. It's ridiculous. And he's the nicest guy and he's a badass B3 player. So thanks ever so much for sending us these uh, drum samples. I think it's really, really kind of you. I know with my drum samples, everyone has a little story. Everything was something I did and why I use it and what I use it for. Um, I know you use samples not exclusively featured on their own, but you use them to sub supplant, if you like, to add a little bit more of maybe what you want to hear in the original sound. Looking at these in alphabetical order, we have the CAM cymbals and the K crashes. I presume that's the Zildjian K series crashes. I, you know, probably, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I actually find myself, especially with densely mixed pop songs, that I have to add a cymbal crash maybe at the beginning of a, of a chorus. Is that where you're predominantly using these, for instance? Yeah, like we always put in these crashes on pretty much every song on all the cymbal hits, and most of the time I don't use them. But sometimes if something's not popping through or you want the top of the chorus to hit, you know, it's that. And then, so these are, these are two recorded like left and right. So you can alternate them and it sounds like an actual drummer is hitting them instead of just one sample happening over and over again. Well, thanks for that. That's awesome. Now, next up, we've got Airy Boom Kick. Do you have any memories yeah. of so, where, the, what, how you did this? Well, one? I'm going to actually just listen to these. I'm going to, yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, where these come from, I have no idea. They are an amalgamation of things over the years, probably combinations of stuff that I've created. And, you know, you're working and you're like, ooh, that's a really good sounding kick. But this one, this one is a really good kick sample to give a little bit of extra transient on something and then to have like that kind of long canyonish room room sound in it. So if you've got if you've got a kick drum or you got rooms that aren't super great, you can layer this in and it sounds like the kick's in a kind of a cool room. All right, so next up is Fred Blackbird. I'm guessing the drummer was yes. called Fred, the dr were his drums, yes. and it was at Blackbird. <laughs> yes, don't get mad at me, Fred. Uh, yeah, the drummer's Fred Eltringham, who's awesome and uh, you know has played in a bunch of really cool bands, including Sheryl Crow and the Wallflowers. And this was cut at uh, Blackbird D on the API. And it's this really awesome, super, super useful, like not very hard, but like it's got the air, it's got that kind of thing on it. So it's a really great kick to, uh, to layer. This is a room I've never tracked in and I really want to track in Ocean Way, Nashville. Oh, what a room. So again, same drummer, so cool. presumably. Same drummer as it turns out. Um, yeah, Fred at Ocean Way. And this is, uh, Ocean Way is a really big room and you put these M50s out in the room and it just sounds marvelous. And this is a really fun sample. It's kind of similar, you know, uh, with the air on it, but like crank this through 1176s, add some top end to it and even maybe cut off the beginning of the sample and you'll just get that Zeppelin, you know, levy breaks kind of air thing that you can throw into a... Uh, you know, into the mix. It's great. That live room is an old church, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's huge. With stained glass windows, everything. With a Neve console. Yes, with uh, one of the largest Neve 8078s in the world. It's like 
60 input, 80 input, like 96. I don't know. It's huge. Next up is FRS Head Kick. This one and the the one below it, the kick sub, are two very similar samples. The uh, the head um, head one is is it's like a medium to short room, and it's real. It's kind of real punchy. And the sub is um, a almost a drier and slightly tickier version of that kick drum. They're they're kind of similar. And do you use them together, or do you use them just to solve different problems? That one would be either or. So the second one, the kick sub, uh, you're you're saying it's got some more low lows, but click as well. Yeah, and it's just a little more direct, a little less a little less roomy. And what does the F R S stand for? Fred Reed, and then S. Frank Reed Shippen. That's me. Ah, I keep forgetting you're a Frank. All right, next up is a kick. It says Live Jesus 85 Mead. There's, you've got to tell me what all that means. No idea why I <laughs> named it that. Because it's a, it doesn't actually sound like a live kick. You know, it's, um, I mean, there's some room on it and there's a little bit of distortion on it. But again, this is another one that you'll sneak in, like just sneak in a little bit of, and it'll fill in holes maybe in where your real kick drum is. This one's like in the chest kind of low midi sort of thing with a little bit of tick. And then the next one, the Puigged Kick. That was probably getting hammered through the Puig pull tech or I don't know, one of JJP's plugins or something. And it's like all tick. That's one that if you're, if you've got like a rock track and you just can't hear the attack on the kick, but when you crank it, you get all the symbols or you get like, it gets ah. nasty. You just, I just throw this in and it just pushes a little bit of a tick through. Yeah. We've all had that issue. That doesn't matter what glamorous, fantastic plugins you use. And there are some great ones out there. It's still, it's a compromise. It's always a compromise. And um, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Just to add some extra click kick to your kick click to your kick with the pweed kick then what is uh thick kick thick this one you could actually use on your own it's just like a really nice solid kick drum not much room at all uh just a beautiful sounding kick drum did you record this and blend multiple mics together or is this a single mic do you have a memory of, of this one almost all the time when i'm cutting kick drums it's two mics um Right. You know, blended together into one track. So probably two mics. And would this have been processed through the SSL as well? I'm sure. I rarely like the drums that I cut. So when I do end up liking the drums that I cut, I sample them so I can remember them. <laughs> wow. Well, the drums we have on your course are beautifully recorded and you recorded those. So please uh, cut yourself oh, some slack on that well, one. I, I'm not saying they're not there. I'm not saying they're poorly recorded. I'm just saying that I usually don't like them. It is interesting though, because I've had all kinds of different experiences where I get stuff to mix like you do. You get stuff to mix and you're like oh individually these aren't great but then you put them together and they're amazing or individually they're all amazing but when you put them together they don't sound great it's interesting yeah. there's there's this sort of you, you, you know what i'm saying or sometimes the drum sounds amazing when you push the rooms because the rooms bring the whole thing to life but the close mics aren't that totally. good that one's actually i hear a lot and i've had that problem before where i've gone in and i've rushed haven't had the time to record drums the way i want and the snare's like pink pink it's like lifeless but i push up the rooms totally. and i'm like wow you, you know what i mean all right so the next one is prc clap of joy clap of joy it's just a really great big stereo wide clap, but it's a small group of people. It's only like five people. So it's really useful when you don't want the big crowd clap, um, which comes later, actually. Next up is Money Shot. This one is a weird one. It's a combination of, of a couple of like hip hop samples, and it's kind of one of those backbeats that, that flams a little bit, you know? Um, so there's, there was like, I remember taking a snare sample and then we had like a bag of coins or something and we like dropped it on a floor. So it's like a combination of those two things. Nice. Hence the money. All right. Next up is mono FRS clap one. Yeah, actually, these next five, one, two, three, four, five, are all pretty much just variations on like two people clapping in front of a microphone. 
um, very like mono-ish, uh, just something you would throw in a sampler and say like, just pick these randomly. And it actually sounds like someone just kind of like clapping. So it's not just one sample over and over again. You put it into whatever your sampler is and it'll, you know, round robin them and it sounds a little more uh, real. That's really smart. Okay. So we got five different claps, um, five mm-hmm. different performances of the same recording. So you can randomize <sighs> your hand claps. So it doesn't just sound like, you know, I always think of like a machine gun going. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So we'll move on from those five individuals. Ruminated claps. I'm assuming claps, but with lots of rooms blended in. You will love this, uh, these next two samples because they're basically we will rock you oh, yes. style stomp and clap. You know, you know? I will. We all got to have that, right? Yeah, yep. we all got to have that. So it's the boom, boom, clap, boom, you know, the big roomy stomp and clap that we all need. And again, like, I'm sure we got that probably at Ocean Way. There were a couple of sessions where we were putting rack case lids on the floor and everyone was like stomping on them with one foot and we would just cut 20 tracks of that and that's what it turns into. Next up, Sub Drum Everman Quiet. So this one was fun. Um... It was from a record I did a million years ago for a band called Everman. And it was this big bass drum that we mic'd with an Omni, like right off the top of it. And I took a pencil and just tapped the drum, like with the eraser. Boom. And it's huge. You know, that makes perfect sense. Because we talk about this all the time with, with like bass guitars and drums is that you need to be able to release quickly so the skin can it can properly uh, resonate. But at the same time, you know, because right. you don't want to leave the beater in there or the stick in there. And at the same time, if you hit it too hard, you can sometimes choke it. And everybody thinks that to get a big sound, you got to like cream a drum. But this, I mean, this was literally like, you, this was literally touching your hand, like tap, like tiny, tiny tiny hit and it's huge you know you turn it up and it's just this massive boom oh that's absolutely amazing i want to see if i'm gonna have a visual of that all right tambourine hit i mean i imagine that's a tambourine hit there's some famous tambo that you used to use in motown it's wood um you know we were in some studio where they had a really great sounding tambourine so we just grabbed a hit and the drum overheads on it next up anvil crashed This is totally fake. Um, It's the sound of an anvil with some explosion shit behind it, but it's really fun on like a big like rock record to just throw this in in the third chorus behind the snare drum. Um, You know, it's one of those things that like you don't really notice until you've listened to the song like five times and then you're like, what is on the snare drum? It's so much fun. Or on like a downbeat, like a stop, like where he goes boom, like that one thing layered underneath there just gives it kind of like a metallic weirdness oh that's so cool that's so cool all right next up is crazy tape emulator noise this one is just for fun um at some point one of my um one of my marshall tape eliminators broke and started making this really weird like alien type sounds And uh, I recorded a bunch of it and it has found its way into a lot of records. This one is like, go looking for something fun in it and turn it into a loop, turn it into an atmosphere, throw it through tremolator and like, like pan it in time with the music. It's just really fun stuff. Give me an example of how you've used it. If an intro is boring, you know, I mean, it's really kind of random, weird, crazy noises. So I'll take that and I'll like fade that in with like a reverse swell or something or um, you know, something like that, just to throw some interest in. It's more of a programming thing than a mix thing, but, um, you know, it's fun to have stuff like that around. So next up we have snare, brown waggle stereo. This is just a snare drum that's like tuned really high and it's kind of like the bottom head's out of tune. So it kind of does that like back and forth, like wiggle kind of thing. Yep. Um, but it's got a really nice splat on it and it blends really well 
with uh, with other snare drums. It gives them a little bit of character, a little bit of funkiness to it. How do you feel about that <coughs> snare sound that's been popular now for a few years? That kind of oi, oi, that kind of. It's what I always used to try and get away from when I was when I was recording drums. You know, I always wanted like an even <laughs> thing. But now it's very popular to have a kind of you know, kind of a whatever works. Yeah, whatever works. It it is interesting though, isn't it? It's I think it is. And how often do you get these, for instance, drums that are obviously programmed drums, like but really well done, you know, like the addictive or the whatever triggering system they're using. So they have like room yeah. mics blended yeah. in, but it's still a little bit too perfect. Is this one of those things you would reach for to kind of randomize a really perfect sounding snare? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's the drums in a can are really difficult to mix because all of the microdynamics that a drummer has going on don't exist. So they sometimes they start to feel real linear. So throwing stuff in like that, you know, um, is, is a really great way to do it or doing it where like something new kicks on in the chorus as if he were hitting the snare harder or, you know, it changes, makes it more interesting. Just as a sideline for a second, I, because people ask me about how to work with virtual drums and stuff all the time. One of the things I, I suggest is like maybe to make a drum bus that has a random delay on it and then mix it in super light, just so there's some things that make the hits seem like they're slightly wrong. You know, it's, it is a difficult thing when you're working with virtual drums to make them feel human. Yeah. And detuning, like detune delays, anything just to kind of like go, oh, there's something wrong with this. That's a good idea. I'm going to try that. I, I started from Mark Ender. Sorry, Mark. You know, I don't want to take it as my own. He puts like a delay line in there, uh, slightly pitched out of time that just kind of like makes everything go, you, 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 you know, and then just blends it back in. No, he, dude, he's great. I, I love, I've always loved Mark's work. Yeah, phenomenal. Uh, Drew Clat Stick. What is Drew Clat Stick? Drew is Drew Ramsey. He's a producer I did a lot of work with. We did some really fun records on like India Ari and Johnny Lang and um, um, right and uh, people like that. Yeah, and so that was uh, that was him just hitting like the side of a snare drum with with two drumsticks. So it's slightly off time. You know, but it makes a really great backbeat. That's a better sample sometimes when you have a side stick that's not cutting. This one makes it sound a little more organic than just a, you know. Ah, I need that. Make sure. Side stick. Yeah, because I have that trouble sometimes. Sometimes I'll go in there and try and pull the side stick from one of the performances and put it in there and isolate it and gain it and all that kind of stuff. You know what I end up doing? I end up using the bottom snare louder than the top snare quite often. Because then you get a bit of, boof, mm -hmm. boof, you know, something with personality. But I'm going to yeah. try this. Drew Clat Stick. Next up is Reed. Fred Reed. Ocean Wave. Was this the snare at the same time that you did the kick? Probably. I mean, we've done a bunch of records there, but it's that's just a really great sounding snare drum with all of the Ocean Way room on it. Super useful. Hobbs or H-O-B-S or B snare? Hobbs snare? <laughs> H-O-B is House of Blues. Oh, I see. Um, House of Blues was, they had a House of Blues here for a long time. So that was a session we did at House of Blues. That's just more of an upfront, like aggressive, uh, aggressive snare drum. I think that's Greg Morrow who's a really amazing drummer who played on a ton of like everything from Motown on, like Greg's amazing. All right. Next up metronome. This is something that you've seen in, in the videos that we've done. Um, this is a Yuri metronome tick, right? Yep. When they had the analog Yuri, like metronome thing. And, um, I use this all the time. I trigger this in underneath a snare drum and it just puts attack on it. It's almost like, you hear somebody hitting a snare with this underneath it. It, hears, it feels like they hit it a little bit harder is all. Next up, Motone Stereo Snare. It's a mid-rangey snare with like a medium decay on it, you know, just for adding like a little bit of room. And again, on some of these, you know, on and especially on some of the newer drum triggers, which there may or may not be a drum trigger coming out, from a company called UVI. I can neither confirm nor deny that they have a really cool drum trigger coming out. But one of the things that it lets you do is um, if it existed, 
Uh, it's called drum replacer. Um, <laughs> it, it lets you chop off the beginning of the sample. So on some of these snare samples that have like the room in it, yep. just, you chop off the transient yeah. and you use it to just add room to something. Um, uh, which is really fun. Or you use this to feed your reverb. I completely understand what you're talking about. I, I, I have uh, a snare sample that I have <laughs> that, that does this. And it's, so it kind of goes. Yep. And it adds yep. a little bit of a ring. So it has a decay of a ring and then goes into a room sound. So when you look at it, it's like a, a diamond shape. It's because it's mm -hmm. it, it's got a slow, really slow attack coming up, and then a really long release. So it looks like a diamond. It's really weird and difficult to place. <laughs> you have to chop it to the front where you want it to be, <laughs> and then manually place it. But it makes perfect sense. Oh, that's gonna be really cool. I will look out for that. Could, maybe could might exist plugin that may be coming out right. maybe soon from a company right. maybe Perhaps. called UVI. Perfect. Perchance. Next up, I'm guessing this is from the SB1200 sampler. Hence, it's called Perfect SB1200. It is. It's just the typical perfect 1200 hip hop snare. I had one of those samplers for a long time. I love that sound. 12 bit filter, just like it's great. So, next up is the vinyl pop snare. Yeah, vinyl pop snare. Um, it's a hip hop snare with like a little tick, like a kind of a vinyl sound after it. Uh, it's just, it's more interesting than a single hit back beat. Um, you know, like this and the 1200 and, and like a, a, a poppy kind of hip hop snare and you get a really easy beat to put a song together too. Amazing. The snare wool paper layer. I don't know why I named it that, but this, <laughs> this is a snare drum uh, that was recorded through a distortion pedal. Like I, I usually run a mic on the kit that's running through a guitar distortion pedal. Um, and this is just a snare drum through that. So it's, it's nasty sounding again, you would never want to use it on your own, but when you blend it in behind something, it can give it some really cool attitude. This is also another good one that you can use to feed like a room or a reverb. So mm -hmm. last but no means least, we have Tom one and Tom two. These are just a high and a low tom because let's face it, you only need two toms, right? Um, Good enough for Ringo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. With apologies, with apologies to Neil Pert and the Perfect Circle, but um, uh, these are just two pretty typical. I think they're um, they're like a nice old Ludwig, like just two tom samples. Uh, I use tom samples a fair amount just to kind of blend in sometimes underneath the real toms. Um, you know, and these are real easy, like it'll go into any rock or any pop song or whatever. Yeah. And I think in many mixers defense, um, I'm going to throw myself in this one. We're also dealing with, uh, performance because a lot of times drummers, you know, aren't going to boom, ja -ja boom. They're kind of going, blah, blah, blah. And then they're smashing their cymbal mm -hmm. and whatever you do, and there are some great plugins out there, but whatever you do, that ride cymbal might be bleeding like crazy into the floor, Tom, and what, and you just can't pull it out. So, you know, having a yep. good, good, good Tom samples is, is a wonderful thing. Well, Reed. Yep. That was amazing. Thank you ever so much. Warren. Very welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you as ever. Down below, there is a link to download all of these samples. Thanks, Reed, for giving us an explanation of how they're recorded and probably more importantly, how you use them. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Check out down below. Get the drum samples. There's also a special on Reed's course. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Mm -hmm.